Okay, let's talk about a couple of special triangles that you absolutely are going to have to memorize. We're going to be using these over and over again the rest of the time you're ever doing trig. When you get to calculus, you're going to be expected to have these memorized. So I say memorize them now. Okay, let's start with, say we have an equilateral triangle. Not a very good looking equilateral triangle, but pretend this is equilateral and all three angles are 60 degrees. And every side has length one. And let's cut this triangle in half. So again, it's not a very good looking equilateral triangle, but imagine it was and we cut it in half. So each of these angles here on top would be 30 degrees. So this would be a 30, 60, and that would form a right angle here, 90. This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Well, we know this side over here is one, and I've cut this bottom side in half, so this side over here has to be a half because I cut it in half. We could use Pythagorean to find this third side. So maybe we'll call this side B. Then we know if this is A, and this is our hypotenuse C, one half squared plus B squared must be C squared. And we know C is one. So one fourth plus B squared equals one. So b squared will be 1 minus 1 fourth, 3 fourths. We take the square root of both sides, because I don't want b squared, I want b. b will be the square root of 3 fourths. And I can do square root of the top over square root of the bottom. Square root of 3 is root 3. Square root of 4 is 2. So that gives us this triangle. I'm going to draw this nice and pretty and big and here's a 30 degree angle, a 60 degree angle and a right angle. The hypotenuse is one. The shorter side is one half. And the longer leg across from the 60 is root two. So we could memorize this order, one half, root three over two, one. And that's that goes with the 30, across from the 30, across from the 60, and across from the 90. Or something I like to do because it gets rid of some of these fractions, Let's just double all of these lengths. If I make this triangle twice as big, it's still the same triangle. It's still proportional. So I could just double everything, multiply all the sides by 2. There's 30, there's 60, and there's my 90. And I could say 1, 2, root 3. And you could check that. I just doubled all three of those. So I just memorized this order, three, three, two. And that goes with the 30, the 60, and the 90. So what that means is, in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, if you know one of the sides, you can find the other ones. So, for example, let's even draw it different. I'll lay it on its side. Here's my 30 degree angle. If I know this side is 7 across from the 30, then I know the hypotenuse is double that. It has to be 14. And I know the side across from the 60, the longer leg, has to be that one times root 3. Now, why do we care about this? Because we get some nice pretty trick functions from these. So in any of these triangles, I could literally use any of them I've drawn here. I could say, what is sine of 30 degrees? Well, sine of 30 degrees will be opposite from the 30 over hypotenuse. One half 
over 1. Or I could use this triangle. Sine of 30 will be opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over 2. Or I could use this one. Sine of 30 is opposite over hypotenuse, 7 over 14. Those are all a half. Sine of 30 is a half. Memorize that. That is going to come up a thousand times over the next couple of months. Sine of 30 is a half. What about cosine of 30? Cosine of 30 will be adjacent over hypotenuse. And I can use any version of this triangle. Root 3 over 2 over 1. Or in this version, adjacent over hypotenuse root 3 over 2. Okay, what about the 60s? A couple of different ways I could think about it. If I want sine of 60 degrees, sine and cosine are co-functions. Sine of 60 has to be equal to cosine of the other angle, 30. It has to be, because they're co-functions. Or I can just use my triangle. Sine of 60 will be opposite over hypotenuse. What about cosine of 60? Again, sine and cosine are co-functions. Cosine of 60 has to be the same as sine of 30. But let's look and see. Cosine of 60, let's use this version of the triangle, will be adjacent over hypotenuse. One half. Memorize those. Okay, one more special triangle, what we call the 45-45-90 triangle. So here we're going to have an isosceles triangle where both of the acute angles are 45 degrees. And that means that these sides opposite them must be the same. So let's say both of these sides are 1. For example, I could make them whatever I want, but for simplicity, let's say 1. Then I could find c over here. Just using Pythagorean, c squared will be 1 squared plus 1 squared. So c squared will be 1 plus 1. c squared is 2. But I don't care about c squared. I want c. c must be square root of 2. So I have this 45, 45, 90 triangle that goes, both of these angles are 45, 1 to 1 to root 2. Now what's usually best is if we make the hypotenuse equal to 1. So I'm going to divide all three sides by root 2. So I'm going to call this guy 1 over root 2, and same here. And then you may recall, to rationalize a denominator, multiply top and bottom by the denominator. We'll get root 2 over root 2 times root 2 would be root 4, which is just 2. So our 45, 45, 90 triangle, I think it's best to memorize it like this. Root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, 1. And then from that, it's really easy to see that sine of 45 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, root 2 over 2. And so is cosine. Cosine of 45 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's the same number. This is the only place sine and cosine are equal, at least in a right triangle, 45 degrees. We could also see here, from any version of this triangle, this is really important. Make sure you memorize this one. Tangent of 45 degrees I could use, say, this version of the triangle. 1 over 1, opposite over adjacent. Or I could think tangent is just sine divided by cosine. Root 
Those things are equal. Anything divided by itself is 1. Tangent of 45 degrees is 1. Memorize that. Sine and cosine of 45 degrees are root 2 over 2. And that's a good place to stop.